Well, welcome. I am Mr. Murphy, and today we're going to be looking at the second part of Lesson 1.1. So in the first part, we looked at domain and range. We also looked at different ways we could represent the domain and range with set builder notation and interval notation. We also looked at um, how to know when a graph is positive, how to know when a graph is negative. Um, and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be furthering those concepts of looking at some other details for functions. But first, I want you to review what we did yesterday. I want to see what you can remember. So I want you to pause this video and try this little warm-up here and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you did it correctly. All right, let's see how you did. So first off, your domain and range. Remember, I put these in interval notation. That's my personal preference. Um, it's one that you should really be familiar with. It makes things a lot easier. But you can put anything in here for x. You can see that if you were to squish this on the x-axis, you'd have an arrow going in both directions. So that means the domain would go from negative infinity to infinity. The range, you can see that it doesn't have a minimum point. There is no low point to this graph. It has a maximum point. The maximum point is where y is 10. Okay, we want to make sure that you're looking at the y value. So the maximum y value is 10, but there is no minimum point. So it goes from negative infinity to 10. And the order is important. If you have those switched around, that is wrong. So you want to make sure that you get the order correct. Now, where is it positive and where is it negative? Well, it's positive when it's above the graph. So it's positive from negative 11 to 0 and from 0 to 11. Now, if you said that it was positive from negative 11 to 11, that's wrong. Because at the point 0, 0, the graph is neither positive nor negative there. So those are two separate seg uh, sections or segments. Um, so we'd go from negative 11 to 0 and from 0 to 11. We'd keep those as two separate pieces. Don't combine those as one. And then it's negative below the x-axis. So it's negative from where from negative infinity up to, to negative 11. Again, we're using the x values. So on the x axis, from negative infinity to negative 11 is where the answers, where the y values are going to be negative. And then from 11 to infinity uh, for the x values, again, that is where we're going to get answers that are negative. All right. So let's look at another example. Now we're going to look at how can we tell when a graph is increasing or decreasing. Now, when we read a graph, we read a graph like we read a book. We read it from left to right. Okay, so looking at this graph, we can see that it's from left to right, we can see that it's increasing. And then from, or it's increasing from negative infinity to zero. Again, we're looking at the values for x where the graph is increasing. So from negative infinity to zero is where the values for x or where the graph is increasing. Okay. Where is it decreasing at? Again, reading it from left to right, it's decreasing starting where x is 0 on to infinity. So from 0 to infinity, the values, the y values, are decreasing from when x is 0 on to infinity. Okay, so we're referencing this in terms of x where the y value is increasing. And we're referencing this in terms of the x where the y's decreasing, where the answer is decreasing. So that's where it gets a little confusing. Don't make it harder than it has to be, though. All right, I want you to try these. Okay, so I want you to look at these two graphs and figure out where are these two graphs increasing at and where are they each decreasing at. So just like you've done before, pause the video and try this on your own and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the answers correct. All right, let's see how you did. So for this first one, you should have had that it's increasing from 2 to infinity. Okay, so you're looking at that x value, so that vertex is at 2, negative 4. So that means where x is 2 on to the right, it's increasing. Where is it decreasing at? It's in decreasing from negative infinity to 2. Let's look at the other graph. When we read that from left to right, this one was meant as a trick question. When we read it from left to right, it's not increasing at all. It's decreasing. So we say it's decreasing from negative infinity to infinity. That was a tricky one. If you didn't get that, make sure that you get that in your notes. All right. Uh, just as a review, graphs are always read from left to right. So that's why you can tell when it's going to be not increasing or not decreasing with some of those linear equations. All right. The last thing we're going to look at is this, what's called the average rate of change. Now, you're going to notice that this is going to be similar to slope. But a rate of change can be used when a line is not a straight line. Like when we look at this graph going from a to B, it's not a straight line. It's a curved line. And by the way, I want you to look at that interval. The interval uses brackets. So it's not a coordinate A, B. It's using brackets saying starting from A going to B, what's going to be the rate of change over that period of time? 
And so we do have a difference there between the, the y values and we have a difference between the x values. And the way that we're going to set this up, what we're trying to find is that purple line there. We're trying to find the difference between those. We're trying to find that distance. And so the average rate of change is going to be found by doing this. It's going to be taking that difference in the y values divided by the difference in the x values. Or another way to look at it is the change in y over the change in x. In chemistry and other, in physics and math, we use that little triangle symbol to represent the change. It's the change in. So the change in y over the change in x. Or you might be familiar with that from the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. However you want to look at it, it doesn't matter. Okay, but we're finding the change in y over the change in x. The most common mistake is people switch those around. When they put the x's on top, the y's on the bottom. Don't make that mistake. Change in y is on top, change in x is on the bottom. So let's look at some of these examples. So it says, what do the average rates of change over the intervals negative 2, 0, 0, 3, negative 2, 3 indicate about given functions? So looking at this one, if we were to look at these intervals, or the rate of change in those intervals from negative 2 to 0, from 0 to 3, from negative 2 to 3, they're all 0. The rate of change is going to be 0 for all those, or the slope would be 0. So it has the same rate of change of 0 over any of those intervals, so we say this is a constant function because it's constantly the same value. Okay, uh, so look at this one. Here we have all the rates of change. Okay, if we were to go from negative 2 to 0, from 0 to 3, from negative 2 to 3, you can see the work all done there. The key here is we're just looking at all of these end up being 1 half. And so this would be a linear function. Okay, so I want you to recognize the difference between these two. This is a constant function because it's got a slope of 0. Okay, this one, they all have the same slope of 1 half, but it's not a constant function. It's going to be a linear function. Okay, because it's, the only time that it's constant, we refer to it as constant is when it's 0. But otherwise, if we always have the same rate of change between any two points in the line, we say the graph is linear. Now let's look at this one. So this one we clearly see from the graph it's not linear, but if we were to find the um, rate of change between negative 2, 0 and 0, 3 and negative 2, 3, again looking at those x values because at negative 2, 0, that's not a coordinate, that's where x is negative 2, y is 4. And at zero, when x is 0, y is also 0. Okay, so you can see from the formula there, we take 0 minus 4 divided by 0 minus negative 2, or 0 plus 2. But you get a rate of change of negative 2. From 0 to 3, we get a positive rate of change of 3. Between negative 2 and 3, we get a positive rate of change of 1. So they're all different. So that means it is not linear. So anytime we have different rates of change between sets of coordinates, and they are different, then we know it's not a linear function. Okay, I want you guys to try this on your own. So again, you're going to use that slope formula. So starting with negative 2, 0. Um, so going between those two points, I want you to find the rate of change of the slope going from 0 to 3 and going from negative 2 to 3. So I want you guys to go ahead and pause this video. Go back if you need to, to look at some of the work. If you need to see how the work was done in some of those previous slides, do that. But otherwise, try this one on your own. When you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer, then go ahead and hit play. All right, how'd you do? So negative 2, 0. So it's negative 2 is where x is negative 2, y is 4. When x is 0, y is 2 for this one. So we would take your change in y's, so subtract the 2 minus 4, change in x's, 0 minus negative 2 or 0 plus 2. When you divide those, we get negative 1 is our answer. And going from 0 to 3, where x is 0 to where x is 3, we begin working with the coordinate 0, 2. And this time with the coordinate 3, 5. So if I find the change in y's, 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 minus 0 for the change in x's is 3. And 3 divided by 3 would be 1. And so on. So what does this tell us? This tells us it is not a linear function. Okay, the fact that they are all different. Okay, which we can clearly see from the graph. But the idea here is to make sure you know how to find the rate of change. All right, so let's look at some of these functions, some of, the, some of these parent functions you need to be familiar with. Uh, so the first parent function that we've been working with in this chapter with lesson 1, 1 is a linear function. The most basic form of a linear function is just y equals x. The graph of that would look like this. And the uh, domain would be from negative infinity to infinity. The range would also be from negative infinity to infinity. And it's increasing 
from negative infinity to infinity, it's not decreasing at all, okay, because this graph is increasing from left to right. The intercepts are both at zero. Okay, so those are some key features of our linear function. Let's look at a quadratic. So this is another parent function you should be familiar with. We're going to be using these a lot in this chapter and a lot during the course of this year. So y equals x squared is what we call the parent function for a quadratic, because that's stripped away of everything else, and the graph of that would look like this. So it has a vertex at the point 0, 0. Uh, it also has, to, to identify that or to look back there at the graph, it also has a line of symmetry or axis symmetry, which is the y-axis, meaning it's the same on both sides of the y-axis. But going to the domain there, the domain would go from negative infinity to infinity. The range starts at 0 and goes up to infinity. The minimum value is 0. It's included, so we use a bracket there. It's increasing from 0 to infinity, and it's decreasing from negative infinity to 0. And this has an x-intercept at 0, and it also has a y-intercept at 0. Again, this is dealing with the parent function for a quadratic. Now let's look at the parent function for an absolute value function. That's in the form y equals absolute value of x. And here's what the graph looks like. Just like a parabola, it also has a line of symmetry. In this case, it's the y-axis. So if it's flipped over the y-axis, it's the same on both sides. And it also has a vertex, like a parabola. But it's different from a parabola in that, in this case here, it's forms a V, not a U, so it's formed by two straight lines. The domain for this, very similar to what we've seen before with negative infinity to infinity, and again the range starts at zero and it goes up to positive infinity. It's increasing from zero to infinity just like the um, quadratic was, and it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero. And it also has the same x-intercepts and y-intercepts, so you see some similarities there between some of those different parent functions that we've talked about. Now, we do have another kind of function called a constant function. It would be like y equals 1, or y equals 3, y equals 8, y equals 0. It's going to be a horizontal line uh, where y is whatever that number. Okay, so the domain for that would be from negative infinity to infinity. The range is just 1. Okay, so the y-intercept is just 1, um, and that would be some key features for a constant function. So there you have it. So that is uh, the end of this uh, chapter. So good luck now as you work on the homework, and hopefully this answers any questions you might have from anything in the second part to Lesson 1-1.